going on guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about is the Canon 5D Mark IV worth it at the end of 2020 heading into 2021? So let's jump into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is the price coming in at around 2,500 US or 3,200 Canadian and that's an absolute crazy amount of money especially for a camera that's four years old. It came out in 2016 and that's just crazy to me in my personal opinion i don't think it's worth that amount of money that's a lot of money for what you're getting the canon 5d mark IV is very similar to the canon eos r camera which i'm currently filming this video on right now and if you do end up getting this you can pretty much save almost a thousand dollars that's actually pretty crazy because these cameras are very very similar in most of the specs, body wise, and it's just crazy to me that they're charging you an extra thousand dollars for a camera that's technically older and technically has less features, which doesn't add up in my mind. So moving forward, the Canon 5D Mark IV kind of gets hard to recommend because I don't think Canon is going to create any more digital SLR cameras or any new lenses. Not to say that there isn't a crazy EF lineup of lenses already, but it does get kind of hard to recommend because I don't think there's going to be any updates to these in the future. Somewhere where the 5D Mark IV shines is in photo mode, I absolutely love using this camera for photos. There's something about just using the optical viewfinder as well as the shutter sound. It just sounds absolutely amazing when you're using this camera and all the buttons are exactly where you would think they would be. There's nothing on this camera where you're kind of having to hunt through the menu system or you need to take off your gloves in the winter time because it's freezing right now. Skin to screen contact. There's a button for pretty much everything and all the features that you will need to access, you can access by a button or a little dial. So I've been using the 5D Mark IV for a couple of years now and it never has any issues. It's just built like a tank, doesn't have any overheating issues or anything along those lines. It just works. As well as it comes with dual card slots, one CF card and one SD card slot for those professionals that just need a camera that works and you're gonna be able to have a backup of all your photos. Even though the Canon 5D Mark IV doesn't allow you to use the new RF mount and doesn't have like in-body image stabilization like the IBIS or even digital stabilization, it doesn't have any of this. The only stabilization that you're gonna get is lens IS. I know a lot of professionals that do use this Canon 5D Mark IV. They haven't upgraded to the RF system yet. All right, so that's enough about photos. Let's talk about video because now more than ever, people are shooting a lot of video and content. For the average person, in my personal opinion, that this camera's gonna be fine. Like if you're only shooting basic video and like 24 frames, it's gonna be perfectly fine you know no issues but once you start getting into the crazy frame rates you're gonna start running into issues and lack of features most new cameras these days have 120 frames a second in 4k or if they don't have 4k they have 120 frames in 1080 and this camera just doesn't even have that at all they have 120 frames in 720 where you definitely can see the issue and quality difference. This camera does have 4K, but it's a cropped 4K. It's not gonna be full frame. And in my personal opinion, it's still good. You can use it if you want to get more of a reach and like a zoom, or you can use it for maximum detail if you want to get something that's really, really rich in detail. It's absolutely amazing. I will say though that the file sizes from the 4K video is absolutely mind-blowing. Like it's freaking crazy. Their files are massive and they're super 
hard to work with in my personal opinion and slows down my computer. But the 1080 video is actually really good. I will upscale from 1080 to 4K and you really can't tell the difference. That's what I've been doing on the Canon R and my 5D Mark IV for the longest time and I don't think anybody can really tell the difference. All right, so that's enough about actual camera specs and anything like that. You're not getting a camera just based off of the specs that it has. But I will say though that this camera is an absolute beast, especially if you pair it with a decent lens, you're gonna be able to get some amazing results from this camera setup. The EF lineup of lenses is absolutely crazy. You'll definitely be able to find lenses that fit whatever needs that you do have. That's not gonna be an issue. The Canon EF lineup is super big and they have an absolute crazy amount of lenses. So my answer for is this camera worth it at the end of 2020 heading into 2021? The answer is if you buy this camera new, then in my personal opinion, then it's not worth it. But if you're able to get this camera used on the used market and pick it up for maybe half price, then it's definitely worth it because you can get some crazy lenses with this. It's still a good camera. People still use this camera today and it gives you a decent sensor. It's a full frame sensor. So if you pick it up for around half price, then yes, this camera will and still is worth the money. I just want to finish by saying don't fall into the gear trap because you don't need the newest camera or lens to get quality images. Use what you have. It's not the gear that makes your photos good. It's you as a photographer, videographer that makes your photos and videos good. Like some of my favorite lenses are 40 years old, which is absolutely crazy. And if you tell people that, then they'll probably laugh at you. The quality of lenses and camera bodies is so good these days that you can't really tell crazy differences unless you're pixel peeping. But that's all I have for this video. If you did like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does help. And until the next video, Peace.